Okay, and we see this render warrior against the druid. That's good. Sorry, I still have to get the invite from Hoy. Yeah. To spectate. Yeah. If not, but yeah, I can see. I can see the patron warrior sand. Oh yeah, yeah. I just we just got it. Um, here we go. And yeah, the patron warrior. Yes, he is going pretty, pretty good. Okay. So who are actually having what are the tools? Some oh let me check. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Um who are actually having like kind of the ability to block a little bit of the aggression out. On the other hand, leaving the shade up as a three one, which is very much can for the for the taskmaster and the acolyte also actually double acolyte but we also see uh, doctor five possible doctor five what do you think of not uh, actually taskmastering the shader what was not has casting the shade. Well, he d doesn't value the armor smith um, on the board too much. It's just a one three minion, which it doesn't provide a lot, and you don't really need the armor at this stage of the game. Mm -hmm. So just to get an additional card guaranteed and have a better min better status minion on the board is pretty valuable, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I guess the stats being probably like three two being indeed a little bit better than one three in this particular situation, and uh, surrender actually opted in to sacrifice what you said, like the 1-3 on the board for that, for an additional card basically. So yeah, I mean, it's a close it's a close call for sure, but you're also right if you say that the armor actually doesn't matter too much, so the armor smith is not doing that much at the moment. So I also like it. And we see also like from Turinda like a Grim Patron into Inner Rage and potentially something else. And this is also yeah quite quite interesting to be mentioned because um, this is one of the ways how a patron warrior can actually decide and get the win against druid. Oh, I finally got the invite from Hoy. Nice. Oh, I can see his hand too. Oh, you couldn't see Hoi's hand. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's also like Hoi actually uh, opted in for the turn five Ancient of Lore instead of the turn five Doctor Boom. Yeah, this seems surprising. It's but surprising, actually, right? But actually, it's like the boom. It's okay because like the Boombos don't really do much um, because the Acolyte and the Crew Taskmaster can just run into them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, it's close. I mean, as you said, the, the Yakolite could run to the boom bot, but on the other hand, do you really want to um, invest three damage just to draw this one card and actually damage your Yakolite and the boom bot can also go somewhere? I think it's a close call, yeah, because it's it's definitely Dr. Boom now, right? Uh, there's definitely a potential to simply play Dr. Boom here. So if you play Dr. Boom first, like, if you play Ancient of Lore... I think we might just see Keeper and... And Wrath, yeah. Keeper and Wrath, or Keeper and Darnus' Aspirant. The Wrath is, can often be, like, important... Um, for the patrons? To deal with the patron board, exactly. 
Yeah, yeah perhaps it's correct. Yeah, sure. I mean, the Dr. Boom um, being also vulnerable to execute and being vulnerable to like a little bit vulnerable to the to the acolytes, right? But I don't mind to see like Keeper and Wrath instead of um, instead of Keeper and Aspirant. So yeah, right now, um, Schwerer seems pretty solid. But first, he wants to surrender. Wants to see what he's gonna draw with the battle rage. After all, he doesn't have a good follow up to a four drop anyway. Besides playing with battle rage, so might as well play battle rage first. Uh, that's, that's also, by the way, the reason why Ras should be quite much better because it also um, de deletes a lot of battle rage value, if you want to say so. So that's also of very much importance. So now that there's no no minions at all that could get potential value from attacking into the boom bots, um, it's a perfect moment to play the Dr. Boom for Hoi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, it's, it's pretty nice. I mean, uh, when we saw like Serena's starting hand, we could have probably wondered whether he would not simply stomp Druid, but Druid with having so many tools can sometimes really stabilize out of nowhere. And also, it is to be mentioned that at the beginning, like Surrender, as we said, like one of those ways to actually decide the match for you is like getting these patrons off. But he just couldn't um, succeed in getting this inner rage combo, inner rage whirlwind combo, and as a result, simply having the patron actually as a completely dead card for the match until this moment, at least. Yeah, we saw Surrender having like a Taskmaster and the uh, inner rage. Um, but already those have been used for Acolytes, so we, we will have to see if he finds another enabler for the patron. Of course he has two whirlwind effects, but those are a little bit harder to set up a uh, big patron board immediately. So yeah, Lothap is kind of annoying for the Druid, because uh, yeah, half of his hand is getting more expensive, but the other, but he still has another half, and there he has plenty of options to choose from. Again, yeah, absolutely. Every minion here. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that boom bot. That was that was intense. Yeah, that's. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's like a little bit RNG stone at the side. Yeah, I guess after. I mean, I mean, this boom bot. The chance was not that low. I mean, it was one in twelve, right? Well, I mean, 1 in 12 is pretty low, isn't it? Yeah, 1 I mean, in 12 is pretty low, but it's not like Doomsayer out of Shredder low. <laughs> okay, it's not out of the Shredder, out of Shredder low, but it was pretty insane. I mean, that, that probably decided the game, because, I mean, now Druid pressures Patron, depletes, like, the time Patron does actually have. Still having the tools, especially against Chrome with the BGH, who he just drew. So this yeah, game should be... Being forced to use the Grom for board control usually would be a pretty good play too, but that BGH, so good. And right on time. Yeah, it's pretty insane. Also, the patrons still being dead because there is no whirlwind effect. So the best surrender can actually do at the moment is like simply setting up death by it next to him, which is not bad on the Drake. But yeah, I mean... You will be facing down a lot of pressure from those remaining minions. Yeah, exactly. I mean... As well. I mean, we know what's coming, right? I mean, there is a lot of stuff. Oh, actually, yeah. Yeah, Surrender doesn't even want to see what his opponent has. He probably already knows. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was... Surrender actually surrendering. Yeah, I, I got that actually one, like, in the last match, because, like, he surrendered, like, all three games where he actually <laughs> lost. One turn before, actually, Lethal was on board. Yeah. Okay. So... Did you check your sound? Is it is it better now or? Um, yeah, it's quite all right. Oh, maybe I don't know. We'll see. Actually. Yeah. No, no, I mean like, uh, can you can you take a look at the stream? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm listening. To oh, you are listening now. Now in-game sound and uh, our sounds are fine. Or what? How does it? Let, let me see. Let me hear. I can't hear anything right now. You can't hear anything, yeah, that's not good.
Okay, so we have um, yeah, warrior patron mirror. Patron mirror, yeah, that's uh, very interesting for sure. I have, I'm not seeing many of those recently. No, no, but actually we have uh, we had one like one match ago, like um, it was between surrender and. Hmm. No, we, we had one of those before, but... Um, okay, so let's see how this goes. Also, uh, did you check sound? Okay, you, you will eventually check that. Okay, what do we have here? So, we have Surrender with... Um, well, kind of a bad start. Simply like turn one nothing, turn two... Um, Armoring up, that's like a super bad start. And there's also one thing which uh, has to be mentioned like the patron starts usually could argue, yeah, I mean, has it not always been like this that patron doesn't do anything, let's say the first one, two, perhaps three turns in the mirror? But it's different now because now patron is actually a tempo deck. So a pure tempo deck, which means no, you want to curve off the patron, you don't win by turn nine or by turn 10 with like one turn kill option. But you simply want to aggro your opponent down. What you see here is actually, I mean, how you already won the first game. And um, in the Patreon mirror, the only thing which counts is whoever gets the Patreon first wins. I talked about it before. And in this case, we actually see Hoi getting the patrons first, and this is a secured yeah. win. The thing that is, is the, that is the sickest hand you can have, actually, as a patron warrior. I mean, this, this has been um, like this in the patron mirrors in the past as well. Yeah, got, like the big patron board first usually was ended up being the winner mm -hmm. unless it could be like a huge rotting OTK turn. Yeah, exactly. I mean, what you just said, like in earlier times, it was like whoever got the combo first, unless the opponent could like counter with a potential, uh, like there were potential like either Wasong into clear two patron turns or Wasong into um, patron themselves after they played Thurston to clear the board or Bossong into OTK uh, frozen turns uh, to actually counterfeit this patron combo but this is not possible nowadays because Bossong got nerfed so now it's really only like whoever gets the patrons first in this matchup simply wins S straight away there is nothing Surrender will be able to to do about that And uh, <laughs> he, he surrender again. Yeah, he, he also knows. I, I told you, like he is really surrendering very, very often, uh, without even lethal on the board, just because he knows. Uh, and this makes him actually going zero two and getting like um, Hoi in a position where he can actually, yeah, where he has a huge lead. Yeah, he only needs to win only one of the next three games against surrender. Surrender picks probably the best class against Secret Paladino, what do you think? Yeah, that is yeah, that is definitely the matchup he wanted to see. He wanted maybe to see it one game earlier already, but didn't get didn't get it. Got the mirror instead. But yeah, usually it doesn't like it doesn't matter, you always want to go for the patron anyway. Mm -hmm. Whether if you're facing the mirror or the Secret Paladin, which is his favorite matchup. Okay. Yeah, I mean, coin into Vorex, of course, the perfect answer against the Secret Keeper. Pretty insane. Like, that really makes a huge, huge difference. Like, Secret Keeper unanswered would have meant 3 4 Secret Keeper hitting face immediately, buffed up with a redemption and Avenge. On the other hand, like, what we see now is like that Hoi can now play double Secret for nothing. I mean, Knife Check is not an option here, right? Well. Um, yeah, with the fireworks on the board, it's definitely not really what you want to do. Yeah, who even like, uh, opts in like to produce a one-one, but that does make things better. Like the one-one is just cannon fodder for Taskmaster, for Armor Smith, and so on and so on. Even the master here. I mean, Hui tries probably now to go for the turn five juggler into master, but 
To be honest, it doesn't really look. Oh, oh there's even Juggler. Huh? Hmm. Yeah, the Juggler is actually fairly decent with them combined with an event. Because no matter how, with the stats on the board right now, if Surin doesn't have anything to interact with the board in hand, um, there is no way of killing both minions. Uh, but but we know that there is a Taskman, and this will get really things will get really really ugly here. I mean, if Surin actually attacks with the Armorsmith into the one one, Avenge Prox knife. I mean, does he even? I mean, yeah, that would be one option. Then he can actually hit the knife juggler and Taskmaster. It. I think that's also like. What, what is the the best play here, right? Yeah. Could it be exactly what Surrender is going to do? I would assume. Yeah, and that's also the best option. Yeah, I like I like this play very much. He could have probably not done it differently. Because he cannot attack like the knife tracker first and things like this. So yeah, that was really efficient. Yeah, Surrender might actually just win this game, even without having any patrons. Yeah, but you don't really need them. Like, it's it's a nice to have, but it's not it's not a must. As as we talked about it, like, um, patron warrior nowadays is actually like get its strengths from actually carrying out very nicely and being able to deploy this pressure on board and things like this. Yeah, Hoy still is able to apply a lot of pressure with that Master of Battle into Minibot, being able to refill the board immediately. But with the. Oh man, I was about to say, like, there's no whirlwind effect to deal with this properly, but now Surrender picked up the whirlwind, can follow it up with. With, like, I don't know, like Berserker or Shredder. Depending on what you want to have on a board, do you want to have the bigger attack minion or just the more resilient minion and also the minion that's better for your mana curve? Yes, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, it, it looks it looks really good. Like for... Oh, he's actually not going to play the whirlwind just yet. Oh, okay. Clever. He's actually... Wait, okay. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, with, if he expects something like a... Uh, this just challenger to come on the board right now on turn 6, mm -hmm. then... The whirlwind will be even more valuable. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and also it makes a lot of sense with the Acolyte, right? I mean, he does have the Acolyte in the hand, so what he actually wants to go is against a mysterious challenger, Acolyte of Pain into Whirlwind to execute. Like that's the plan here, and it will also perfectly work out if um, if we take a look at this here. Um, there is a watcher. Is there any way to make use of it, or is it a completely bl a complete blank? It soaks boombots. It soaks boombots, yeah, that's pretty huge. <laughs> okay, hmm. That's all, yeah? There's nothing. Okay. Yeah, and then like another minion on the board for battle rage sometimes. Right, right, yeah. That's actually quite. That could be quite an important one because the Ancient Watcher will actually remain on the board the entire game, I assume. I mean, you will never see any attacks from Hoi into that one, right? So. What would you do here? Like Acolyte of Pain, Vervent, Execute, right? That looks pretty good. Yeah, I would go for the same thing. Oh wait, you attack first, do you? No, you don't have to. I mean, it's, really... I mean, it's not that easy, right? I mean, if you Vervent first, then you have a higher chance that the Avenge goes away. But on the other hand, if you attack first, you also Vervent the 2-1 away. So I can definitely see reasons for both. I think I would attack first because you just were into to one two, which oh, is yeah, exactly. very good. Yeah, it's just a little bit bad if if the one one gets buffed by Avenge. Oh wow, oh, okay. that's like that's like freaking yeah that's that's insane RNG. I mean, on the other hand, you have to say like how oh, you also got like the four. Um, the four damage boom bot off, right? So um, it's it's kind of semi just this is semi justice if you want to say so. But this event doesn't even cost only like the four three minion, the potential four three minion. But it 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 would have actually been a five four minion. But actually, the five four minion would have definitely changed the game outcome, right? Or like would have had a lot of potential to change the game outcome. Just imagine a five four minion being on the board now. 
Yeah, or or uh, one one that's been buffed would be good too. No, this is what I mean. Like the the one one. If the one one would have get buffed, it would have been a five four. No. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's just an additional five four, just out of nowhere. Just imagine yeah. that. I mean, it it would have been already thirteen, fifteen damage. No, actually, yeah, yeah, actually fifteen, yeah. I mean, like this, it's still a blessing of kings, attack, core camera, and stuff like this. It's still very good, yeah. But with the five four, that would have probably been the three three zero sweep. And you was actually uh, mentioning battle rages before, right? Didn't you? Yeah, this is exactly the scenario where, yeah, where this play might lead us, with the ancient watcher being damaged. But so ancient watcher OP. Yeah. Can can he afford to draw cards here? Maybe he has to actually because this mini bot is kind of threatening, and he has no good way of dealing with it. He might have to pick up a second execute. Yeah, I mean, or a or a second battle rage. I mean, with the watcher on the board, this is. What's the alternate? The alternate would be X, what? Corsair for 3 and Berserk. So Berserk, X, Corsair and then drawing Blade, right? I don't mind that play actually. Because what you do with this play is actually you get yourself another chance to perhaps even get the better edge of like for 3 cards. And you definitely know that the Watcher won't die. Yeah, because <laughs> the Watcher is the Watcher. Yeah. I actually like that. You also give yourself the opportunity to actually handle the minibot next turn latest. Question is if you pop the shield with the uh, armor smith right now. It seems like Sir is deciding to do that. In case he doesn't pick up the execute, uh, he can. Yeah, the, the, the pirate will deal 3 damage to the minibot and then the X can finish it off. Mm hmm. We see that Hui just drew like <laughs> Dr. Boom. That's quite convenient. Like, Yeah, with that redemption as well, there's no bad targets that you can get back with redemption right um, now. I mean, from all the cards he could have drawn, like that was the best. By far, right? By far, exactly. I mean, Tyrion would be pretty sweet too. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, that's true. Um, patron, Ghoul... Oh, that's so much pressure. Gotta draw something good with the battle rage. Oh, hmm. that's actually... Does this work? Quite interesting. Does it work? Hmm. Yeah, he's able to clear the boom now. With the frothing and leave uh, Hoy with after like whirlwind patron whirlwinding can leave Hoy with an empty board if he decides to enrage that mini bot too. If if no bomb enrage first, and if, if, if if no bomb hits the face, that is right. Only if no bomb hits the face. If if the bomb's actually deciding to hit face, he simply dies. Yeah, he dies. Wow. <laughs> he simply dies. Okay. Yeah, that's. Uh, well, I had to hit the face for at least three damage. It was not very likely, right? It wasn't it? I mean, it's like ten percent. Uh, it's very unlikely. It's very unlikely. It's like ten percent per hit. It's like twenty percent or something. It wasn't not very likely, no. And this makes it a clean sweep. Pretty insane. That already was it. Yeah, that was the match. This was, this was pretty sick. I mean. Ho Lady Luck definitely favored Hoy a little bit more in that match, but uh, yeah, very very well played as well, no mistakes. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, actually, a really amazing performance here from Hoy. So, yeah, surrender, surrendering the tournament hand here. So, um, we will see Hoy now against Pavel. Pavel.